Hi Capricorn and welcome to your April 2024 Astro Taroscope with me Raphael from Radiant Reality. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me. Quick note, these readings are for your sun, moon and ascendant signs. So, but remember, if you're only going to watch one, make sure it's for your ascendant. It's going to be that much more accurate for you on that day-to-day -day level. Before we start, as always, I would like to bless my decks of cards with all forms of love, light, peace, prosperity and abundance. And I pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise and they help you on your path to your highest vibrational good. So... The first um, transit that I want to look at for you, and remember if I ever forget the dates or the degrees or whatever, that stuff is always in the description box below. Um, and for those of you that would like to know, I am using whole sign tropical western astrology to pick out the transits. So uh, the first transit that I want to look at is Mercury. Mercury is going to go retrograde in the sign of Aries right there at 27 degrees. It's going to come back to like 15 degrees, literally conjunct the north node again, and then it will go forward. Um, so this is happening in your third house of, uh, sorry, your fourth house of home, family, property, real estate, where you live, how you live there. It's also your foundation and your deep emotional self. All right. So lots to consider here. Uh, and for this, it's really getting you to rethink a family member, uh, a family member, a family matter, right? Familial ties, uh, maybe rethinking the familial ties. It also, what you're tied to, who you're tied to through your family, through your home, how you live with others, uh, you know, and where you, whether you want to live with them or not, and all of that good stuff. Mercury for you rules your sixth house because it rules Gemini and it also rules Virgo, which is your ninth house. There's potentially a health related matter that comes up at this moment in time. And it's going to see you reprioritizing what's important. There might also be a potentially a religious or a spiritual matter that comes up to be sort of wrapped up at this time. And uh, interestingly enough, potentially even a funeral, right? Um, this would suggest that somebody's already passed. It's not somebody that's, you know, I'm not saying that there's going to be somebody. Now for this, you've got the hanged man with the queen of swords. And the Temperance card. So Queen of Swords tends to be an air sign woman, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. But she can be somebody that is older. This may be a conversation that you've had with somebody um, that really kind of gets you to see maybe a different side of things. Do you know what I mean? Like there's a chance here that because that Temperance card is sometimes it's a remedial action. Sometimes it's a conversation that sort of changes everything or gets you to see things in a really different light. The Hanged Man card here as well, that's the spiritual element. And the Temperance card is very spiritual as well. I would not be surprised if this Mercury retrograde really, you're going to reframe something here. Something that maybe you've been very hard headed over. And when the time comes, you won't be able to unsee, unsay, undo whatever it is that's kind of been put into motion. This is going to be one of those times where I think the universe is giving you, it's giving you the information that you didn't have previously. All right. Um, and when you get it, you might not necessarily know what to do with it. For your next transit we're going to look at is the new moon solar eclipse. So I wanted to look at this one because it's going to be a pretty big deal. This is a north node eclipse, even though it's not directly on the node, it's still pretty. It's still a pretty big deal. And well, it's only a four degree orb to be fair. Um, it's at nineteen degrees of Aries, right? And it's conjunct Chiron. There is a. It's a pretty decent um, sort of eclipse, right? It's going to represent a big change within your home, family, property, within your real estate, how you live there. Uh, this could also be some kind of healing of a past trauma around uh, your home, your living situation, or even because of your family. Because Chiron is involved in this and the sun rules your, sorry, uh, where is it? The sun rules your eighth house. It is possible that this could be some kind of uh, personal trauma. Remember, the seventh house is ruled by the moon as well, and the sun and the moon is what creates a new moon. So it's relationships. 
there's a potential healing or a mending of a broken family tie here that makes things better for you in the long run. You might not see it at the time because this is, is potentially going to be quite intense for you, especially because it's happening within your fourth house, right? In your deep emotional self, there's something that's going to really be sort of the foundations of your life effectively are being changed or shaped in some way. For this, you've got the Tower card with the star card wow and the wheel of fortune i mean god there's oh there's so many ways i could read this so let me start with the uh, the tower card with the the star card first of all because this is happening in the home please 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 if you have any problems with your electrics do not this month, try to fix it yourself, especially three days before, the day of, and three days after the eclipse, right? Do not try to fix any, unless you are a qualified electrician, outsource this work, right? Get somebody else to have a look at it. The um, tower card with the, the star card, that's something electrical that we're talking about your fourth house, which is your actual home. This month, Please, especially around this eclipse, if you've got a problem with the electrics, get a professional to do it. Okay, I don't know how many more good times I'm going to say it, but that's the heavy part of this. Another way that this could also show up is some kind of spontaneous long distance travel might need to show uh, might need to happen at this time. So if you've got extended family overseas, if you've got extended family in different parts of the world, it's very possible that you could be getting some news from one of them that prompts you to have to travel in some way. So you might have to sort of hop on a plane, uh, you know, and get there sort of quick for any number of reasons that doesn't have to be all of the awful ones it's just you you know you want to be really clear on how it can kind of shape up now the star card with the wheel of fortune is wonderful that's a very light energy but in order to get to that there is going to be some kind of challenging or potentially heavy experience that shows up um, the wheel of fortune also suggests a change in luck and with the star card, this is a moment of pure trust where you realize, you know what, the universe or someone or something out there is actually looking out for you. Finally, if you have a car and or a vehicle, which is basically everybody these days, I will say if there are any problems with it, mechanical or otherwise, it's probably going to have something to do with the electrics on board of the car. Not as dangerous as the home stuff, but even still, please don't leave, like literally give it over to a professional, right? Don't try to do this or to fix it yourself. Okay, so that's on the 8th of the month. On the, what's next? Ah, yeah, on the 18th of the month, Jupiter and Uranus, they've been doing this flirt for the last, you know, uh, 11 months, let's say. They finally come together into their conjunction in your fifth house of pleasure, joy, romance. But remember, the fifth house in the chart is also very lucky. This, if there were ever a sign, the signs that I've told to, to play the lottery, to put a little online bet on or something like that are uh, Aries and yourself, right? Because the luck really is with you. Jupiter for you rules your 12th house, but it also rules your third house of communications. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a reconnection with somebody from your, maybe from your, your family or from your past in some way. Um, the other thing about this as well, this could see you breaking a bad habit, but almost like cold turkey. Like if you're a smoker, you could wake up on this day and just be like, you know what, I'm done, right? And that is it, like I'm absolutely done with this. This uh, Uranus energy rules your second house. So there's potentially as well, a financially uh, beneficial energy to this as well. Uh, it could be a financial opportunity that comes forward, maybe a blessing in the life of a child, because the fifth house is your children, um, that comes in really unexpected way. Now, if you don't have children, this could be a creative or an entrepreneurial venture of some sort um, that maybe does way better than you expected it to. So that could be really nice as well. For this, you've got the two of wands. There's definitely money in this transit with the seven of pentacles. An investment that you made looks like it's about to come good. And with the king of cups, you've got the, which is uh, usually a water sign male. The king of cups actually is about using your creative intelligence, right? And also your emotional intelligence. 
I actually like this for something that maybe you'd already set into motion some time ago or something that you are really passionate about moving on at the moment and it really provides the oomph that you need so that you can walk forward or effectively get something off the ground but it's like you're making a solid investment and you're putting your heart and soul into it. Also, a water sign may or Pisces, Cancer or Scorpio could feature for you at this time and may actually be very helpful or very beneficial, Jupiter, for you at this time. And then finally, on the 28th of the, yeah, on the 28th of the month, um, where are you? Venus will be at 28 of um, Aries. The moon will be at 28 of Sag, and then you've got uh, Mars conjunct Neptune. Mars conjunct Neptune is the spiritual warrior. This is happening in your third house of communications. It's also the third houses of siblings, your local environment. What's really striking to me is that there are four energies, or which is Venus at, in, at 28 of Aries, Neptune and Mars at 28 of Pisces, and then the Moon at 28 of uh, Sagittarius. That's a Cancerian degree, right? And Cancer for you is your seventh house, partnerships, relationships, contracts, business ventures, which means this energy that's taking place between all of these planets and this conjunction in the third, it might have something to do with a contract. It could be had something to do with your significant other. Remember the moon as well also rules your seventh house and it's in the 12th. This is something that comes to light at this time, something that you didn't know, something that you didn't see. And when it's revealed, it's like, shit, I have to deal with this and I have to deal with it immediately. Um, for this, you've got the Knight of Swords, with the Seven of Cups and the Eight of Swords, I will say this to you, be very conscious of taking people's word for it and make sure that you get the information yourself. This is one of those times where trusting that so-and-so told you and that what they told you is good information is not gonna cut it, especially if you're planning to go to war for something, which it looks like a lot of you may possibly do. Remember, like I said, Mars, Neptune, that's like I'm willing to die for this belief, right? And in the third house, it's like whatever you are saying, whatever you're divulging, you need to make sure you've got the facts because that seven of cups with the knight of swords suggests that you don't. And you're going to go off on this tangent. You're going to maybe go on this on this battle or this righteous mission or whatever, and you haven't got all of the information correct. So I would be mindful, especially if you're doing this on behalf of somebody else, because you might be there sort of defending them. You know, you you know going in like, we've all been there, right? You defend somebody to the nth degree only to find out that they really did fuck up. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we, we've all been there. It's, it's part, of, part of life, unfortunately. So something to think about. And then on the, we're going to look at the Human Design Oracle deck for your lunations. Your new moon solar eclipse we've already explored, but let's have a look. All right. For this, you have the gate 39 and provocation. There's going to be some kind of challenge, potentially argument, maybe even a bust up with a family member. And I have to say... Maybe you're not the villain in this discussion. Maybe you're not. But if you let them provoke you, you're going to look like it. All right? I'm just going to tell you straight up. Be mindful of this so that you know how to navigate it moving forward. A fourth house eclipse can trigger a move. It can trigger a change of home, a change of location. That's all very possible as well. Um, it might be that this is the thing that triggers it. And you say, you know what? Actually, it's time to time to go. And then on the 23rd of the month, the sun will move into, well, the sun's already moved into Taurus by then, but there'll be a full moon in the sign of Scorpio in your 11th house. Your higher goals, aspirations, visions, and dreams are getting a big shake up here uh, and potentially revealing to you what your future plans actually are. We've all got plans that we want to do. There's things that we want to kind of set into motion and we do everything that we can to set them into motion. We work hard, we push them forward and then and every so often, sometimes new information comes to light and it's kind of like, ah, oh, actually, you know what? I, like, yeah, like you stop and you think to yourself, like, hang on a sec. 
why am I doing this? Is this what the future plan? Like, what is the real goal here? Um, for this, you've got the Gate 25 and Innocence. This could be a moment at which you come to realise, yeah? Like, what, what actually is what? This could be information that comes to you, because remember, it's the full moon, right? In the sign of Scorpio, which is the sign of secrets. There's something that comes to light at this moment that helps you see that maybe, just maybe... Not even that you're changing your mind, but maybe just maybe you didn't have all of the facts and now you do. Um, it will be interesting to see how this plays out. For uh, With that said, if you would like to get your uh, personal astro taroscope done with me, you can uh, get that on the link in the description box below. I wish you an abundance of all of that good stuff. Take care and I'll speak to you soon.